Let's welcome back Bill Olet. All right, Dean, Dale. good to see you. Entrepreneurship 103. It's great to be able to have all this content going out to the uh, entrepreneurs out there. Isn't it? I know, I know. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled about that. And, um, you know, our journey of finding a way to build stronger and stronger link between you and the customer continues. It feels like we're trying to make buying your product a habit for the customer, which could bode really well for your business. Yeah. And today, the topic is business model. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, essentially, in simple terms, how you deliver your product to the customer and how you get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've, we've focused primarily so far on who your customer is and what we can do for our customers. So we're generating value for the customer. Now we're going to start looking at how do we extract some rent for this value that we've created. Because if we don't, we don't have an economically sustainable business. And, um, and now's the time to do that because, you know, we know what our value is, we know who our customer is, we know what the value is we're creating. And now we've done this analysis of the decision-making unit and decision-making process. So this is a very good time to start talking about, you know, what's our business model? How do we extract value for the value that we create? How much can you expand the value, the strengths of your business by being thoughtful in business model? The answer to that question is it's very significant. I mean, you see this over and over again. People who spend time thinking about their business model, you know, that is time well, very well spent, better spent than spending more time trying to figure out how do you tweak your technology incrementally. Because the business model can change the game. Give an example. I mean, that's, that's pretty significant, what you say. Before Google, there were plenty of search engine companies. There was Yahoo. There was Alta Vista. There was Ask Jeeves. There were, and how they made money was banner ads. You know, here's the search bar, and then here's banner ad, here's banner ad, here's banner ad. Ha People hated it. Yeah, yeah. But how else were they going to make money? They, didn't, they couldn't think of any other way to make money. All of a sudden, here was Google, and they had nothing on their screen. And that allowed them to be much faster. But as you said, customers really liked it. And so how were they making money? Well, they broke the mold. What they did is all the fish were swimming this way, they swam that way, and they came up with a new model that came from Overture, Bill Gross, and it said, we are going to advertise based on your word. You know, choose a word, you can bid for that, and then there's an auction pricing scheme. So rather than an advertising business model based on the real estate space of banner ads, they had an infinite space, because every word in the English language, they, they could have advertising sold against it. And the advertisers liked that as well. So it was great for Google. It was great for the economic buyer, the advertisers, and certainly the end users. We loved it too. But there are also examples of products that uh, were less innovative than their business models. Not to say that the products weren't innovative, but the right. business models really took it out of the park in innovation. Right. Now, there are products that are the reverse. There are situations that are the reverse. Highly innovative products. Mm -hmm. but delivered in a tried and true way, Gatorade. Yeah. Unbelievably innovative product. You know, you're, you're a former athlete and um, you know how innovative it was, but you get it by just <laughs> going to a 7-Eleven and it's right there next to a Coca-Cola. Then you pay for it exactly the same way anything yeah. else. I, I think that's a really good point. I mean, if you have a product that's particularly innovative, you don't want to make things more complicated because you just need to execute that and you will win the game. And it may decrease you know, the friction in the system. And so you're right. And the Gatorade, you know, patented proprietary technology, breakthrough for athletes, they, that was enough. They, they could have the same business model as everybody else, and that was the right decision. But often you need to think about it, because people now are very used to one-time charge. Do I pay for it once, or do I have a subscription? Even a cell phone plan now is yeah. becoming. Or Freemium to premium. People are used to these things. So now that the, the options you have have increased significantly, it's worth thinking about it. E and even if your decision is to go along with everybody else, I encourage, I encourage entrepreneurs to think about the business model. Spend time on it before you just decide which one you're going to do. So the idea is if you want to stay true to convention, you better do it for a reason. And the reverse, if you want to be super innovative, well, great, but do it for a reason. And the reason should be your success and your customer success. So when you think about this, the goal is not to come up with the most innovative 
business model you can. The goal is to come up to the optimal business model for your situation in your context. And, and to do that, what I encourage entrepreneurs to do is explore the space of what the various options are for their business model and then evaluate them. And an innovative one might be the best thing. That might be where you get competitive advantage. It might not be. So for you, understanding the options and then making a choice as to which is the best one is what you should be doing.